land, water, and air temperature learning activity. Brought to you by the GLOBE program. Hi, welcome to another teaching and training video of the GLOBE program. Today, we have a very interesting learning activity for you. One that you can easily do in your classrooms. So, let's begin. Have you ever wondered, what causes the weather? While the weather is pretty complex, and is caused by a number of interdependent and interrelated factors, its cause can be summarized in one. Temperature differences. Let me explain. The sun is the source of energy of Earth, but it does not heat the Earth evenly. For one, the top and bottom part of the Earth gets less heat. Second, the land and water has varying heat absorption capacity. In general, land tends to heat up and cool down faster than water, causing temperature differences. In turn, these temperature differences cause air and temperature movement across the planet. Hot air rises to the atmosphere, while cooler air descends. This creates a convection and pressure differentials that we popularly refer to as low and high pressure areas. Wind blow towards the low pressure, and the air rises in the atmosphere where they meet. As the air rises, the water vapor in it condenses forming clouds, and, sometimes, precipitation. In summary, differential heating and cooling of land and water causes the weather. Time for a brain teaser. Have you ever wondered why the temperature in deserts is extremely hot during the day, and extremely cold at night? Why don't we come back to this question later? And let's do some activity to find out the answer to this question. Let's begin. The purpose of this activity is to help students understand that land and water heat and cool at different rates, and that the properties of soil and water influence the heating of air above them. In this activity students will measure temperature change in soil, water and air as they are exposed to the heating action of the sun. This activity can also be done indoors, with the use of a heating lamp. At the end of this activity, students will gain an understanding of GLOBE specifications for the instrument shelter and perform a guided inquiry project. Moreover, the activity aims to impart to students the following science concepts. For example, in physical science, they will learn that heat transfer occurs by radiation, conduction and convection. They will also learn important scientific inquiry abilities such as identifying answerable questions, designing and conducting scientific investigations, measuring and recording data, developing explanations and predictions using evidence, communicating results and explanations, organizing data in tables, graphing, working effectively, in other words, this activity targets students' cognitive, psychometer and affective development at both intermediate and advanced levels. To do this, you need to allot at least 3 to 4 hours total time. And between 1 and 2 hours actual time on task is required. Here are the materials you need. Two plastic buckets at least 30 centimeters tall. A centimeter ruler. Six thermometers. For this demonstration we'll be using three soil thermometers, and three digital water thermometers. And lastly, you need a means to suspend thermometers over the buckets, such as string zang dowels. If you're doing this outdoor, you also need a heating lamp to simulate the sun's rays. This activity is best done on a sunny, warm day, in an open area without shade. If done indoors, you need a strong artificial light source such as a heating lamp to simulate the sun's heat. Before doing this activity, remember to calibrate your thermometers and have your soil and water temperature protocols ready for easy reference. If you need to review how to calibrate your thermometers, as well as the GLOBE program soil and water temperature protocols, 
visit the GLOBE website at www.globe.gov. Are you ready now? Let's do this. First, fill one of the buckets with soil. Then, fill the other bucket with water. Next, using a stand and strings, suspend the soil thermometers as follows. 1 cm above surface. 1 cm below surface. And 8 cm below surface. Then, do the same for the other bucket with water, using the water thermometer. Quick tips before setting your buckets under the sun. Allow the soil and water to settle at least 30 minutes to allow it to reach room temperature. After the buckets with soil and water have settled, take an initial reading and record them in your data sheet. When doing this outdoor, place the buckets with soil and water in an open space without shade. The best time to do this is right before noon, when temperature is just about to peak and there is at least 3 hours of sunshine. Next. Prepare your data sheet as follows. For the heading, indicate the soil and water temperature reading a 2 minute interval for 20 minutes. Then, on the first column, indicate the thermometer depth. Lastly, don't forget to record your initial reading. For this demonstration, we are using degrees Celsius as our unit of measurement. Now, time to set it under the sun. But, for this demonstration we will be using a heating lamp instead, and do this activity indoors. Read the temperature of each thermometer at 2 minutes intervals for 20 minutes. Record your readings in your data sheet. And then, carefully return the thermometers to their original place. Then, after your final reading on the 20th minute, read the temperatures at 1, 2 and 3 hours. When you're done with your temperature readings, present your data in graphical form. On the x-axis, place the time variable. And on the y-axis, the temperature reading. Back in the classroom, get the students to discuss the following talking points. Is the temperature on the soil 1 cm below the surface warmer than it was when the students set out the buckets 3 hours ago? Why? Which temperature reading is higher at depth of 8 cm? Why? What other conclusions can students draw from this experiment? If done right, and everything else being the same, students should have concluded that the soil surface was much warmer at 1 cm than that of the water at same depth, that the water was warmer at a depth of 8 cm after 3 hours than the soil at same depth, that the temperatures at 1 cm above the surface should be higher for soil than for water. Remember our brain teaser earlier? Do you now know the answer to the question? Why is the desert extremely hot during the day, and extremely cold at night? The answer is, desert sand gets hotter and cools down faster than water and some types of soil. Thank you for watching another training video of the GLOBE program. We hope you find this video helpful. This is Rod Allen Delara and Joanne Calope from the Philippines, signing off. Remember, don't just learn science, do science.